let's go. Do we talk about gatekeepers? We talked about another way that you can find people, um, a good person. And I, I told you we talked about gatekeepers. The other thing that we we talked about is, um, of course, some of the things that we may not know where to look. And I said, in terms of the women, that the good man is could be in you. And that's one of the things that you want to realize and be understanding about that the good the next good person could come through you and what does that mean the next good man could be in you because you are the gatekeeper and a man that comes to you whether the person is somebody you want in your life you can plant seeds in that person's life or you can redirect seeds that are in the ground that are not growing in their proper state you can actually turn that situation around by talking to the man, planting seeds in him, and helping him to be what he needs to be for someone else. So the good man can be in you, meaning that he may not have known everything he needs to know about being a good man, but he can be that good man by some of the things that you teach him. He may not ever get it from home. He may not get it from a male role model, but he's coming to you as a woman. And there's certain things, again, women, if you keep your standards, we you can teach us by having certain standards and ob abiding by those certain standards. And either we're going to either have to take in what we learn or we're going to walk. You know, when you tell a man that you're not sleeping with him, and you tell him why, he may not like it, and he may not accept it, but there are some things that he's going to have to take with him, and he's going to remember that. The women, as I was coming up, that stood their ground with me, I never forgot who they were. I never forgot how they stood up. I never forgot the things that they planted inside of me. These were real simple things. But all of these things helped me along the way. It made me think, okay, this person, um, I, can't, I, I couldn't run my game on them. They wouldn't let me run my game on them. I thought I was smooth. I thought I had all the lines. I thought I could say everything. But, but there was something in this woman right here. She taught me something. you know. And um, now I got to think about it. Men, we've got to look at the women in terms of how we treat them, in terms of how we would want our daughters to be treated. I want to say that because I have a daughter and my perspective really changed the day my daughter was born. I mean, my, my whole perspective about the women thing changed. I'm like, oh man, you know what? How do I want my daughter to be treated? And how I want my daughter to be treated helped me to readjust some of my thinking, some of the seeds that were planted in the wrong places that were not producing anything. One thing I want to I want to say, and I mentioned this before, but I want I want to make this this clear. If we go back to the beginning, remember there was Cain and Abel. You remember Abel had an offering that was pleasing to God. What he had was, and I see some of y'all stop typing, y'all ready, y'all y'all into what I'm going to say. Abel had an offering that was pleasing to God because he he, he had he shed blood, he do animals. He used the animal sacrifice. And watch this. Cain tried to submit an offering, but it was of the stuff from the ground. It was stuff from the ground. Now, his off, Cain's offering was not accepted because he didn't. there was no shedding of blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. So what am I saying? Cain, now here, we're, getting ready, we're getting ready to go somewhere. There are men, women, I'm, I'm going to hit you up to something. Let, let, me, let me tell you something, something you may not have realized. Do you know the reason for the flood? Do you really understand the reason 
that God had to destroy the world by flood. It was because if we look, if you look through Genesis, starting, I think it's like the fourth, fifth chapter. If you look at Genesis, uh, after Cain had killed Abel, um, he cursed Cain and he sent them off. And it says that Cain went away from the presence of the Lord. He went away from the presence of the Lord and he began to have other, you know, he, he, he married, he began to have children and he started, and these people started growing and they grew into evil people. He was cursed because he killed his brother and they grew into some evil people. These were people separate. And then Adam and Eve had another child named Seth. And then it said, after that, after Seth came and his descendants, people began again to call on the name of the Lord. So you have Seth and his descendants, and I'm going to bring it to where I can help you, hope you can understand in terms of men and dating. There's Seth and his line, where they called upon the name of the Lord. And then it was Cain's line of people who were became, became sinful. These were evil people. And they became giants. The giants and Cain's folk started looking over uh, they said the, the sons of men, those were the Cain folk, began looking at the sons of God, the folks that were in this godly line of Seth. They started sleeping and connecting with, with the generation with Seth. And from that point on, it, it just became evil. And God said, you know what, I've got I've to stop this, this cursed generation. Now, let me get back to this thing about Cain. Even though Cain's whole line of people were destroyed, in the flood, and it started again with Noah, again, which was on that on Seth's side, started again, but it got rid of, these were some evil people, if you think you've seen evil in the world today, I mean, these were some evil people, Cain, there are many people, really, men, who don't work in areas, in the same areas, that will produce anything that God has intended. Anything Cain came and his offering was tied to something that wasn't alive in terms of, of shedding of blood. Shedding of blood is, you know, being able to give, be atoned for your sins. That's, uh, animals were necessary. His, Cain's situation, everything Cain, Cain came to, to deal with had nothing to do with atonement, nothing to do with forgiveness. And the enemy, ladies and gentlemen, will send men who have nothing to do with atonement, nothing to do with uh, forgiveness, nothing to do with regeneration and moving forward. And you've got to be able to know who these men are, who these spirits are. And you know what? Cain was mad with Abel because his offering was accepted. And what am I saying? These Cain men, these men with these kinds of spirits, the enemy has sent them on assignment into your life to keep you from submitting an offering. He killed Abel, his brother. He said, I'm going to stop this and make that situation a one-time situation. And he ended up killing and stopping that. And many of you women have picked the wrong men, and they have cut your ability in many ways to atone, to be able to atone and have for your sins and have a right relationship with God. All right, so but that's that's a little story for you right there. It's like, okay, well, where are the good men? Where are the good men? Remember I said that men came from dirt. And seed, and they and they have a seed inside them. Everything that's come from the dirt, vegetables, all kinds of things that's come from the earth has a seed inside of it. Men came from the ground. We have a seed inside of us. Okay, we came from dirt. So watch this. The good men. Now some of you ladies are not gonna like this. Are sometimes bad men that still have dirt on them. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Sometimes good men, good to see you, Zelda, are bad men 
with dirt still on them. So what does that mean? There are some men out here um, who still have some dirt on them. They have not been uh, regenerated. They have some things that's going on that you may not approve of. But if you take get the dirt off of them, they can end up being a good man. Now, I don't know how you flow, but I'm just saying that there are some men that you've overlooked because they have not been perfect in your eyes and they still have dirt on them. Somebody having dirt on the outside because of their surroundings. Watch this. They came from the ground. Dirt on them, the surroundings, but not dirt in their heart. Watch this. See, and it's connected to Cain's offering. You know, that Cain's offering came from out of the ground and it had dirt and it didn't have, it wasn't, it didn't have the factors of the blood which needed to be shed so you can get cleansed. But Cain's offering was dirt. It came from the ground. Let me, let me say this. Many of you women have rejected a potentially good man because he had dirt on him. Now, what's the dirt? He may not be financially secure. Now, I know you're saying, oh, man, I need a man to take care of me. Okay, if that's you, that's, that's you, all right? But the economy has changed. I'm not making excuses, but I, I, want, you to, I want you to listen to me. The economy has changed. How it used to be where a man could work and the woman could stay at home and all that, those days are gone. I mean, they, they really are gone. It takes two people to work because the economy, if you watch, everything has gone up, but salaries have stayed the same. Am I right about it? Everything has gone up, everything, cable, Cell phone, mortgage, you know, property taxes, everything has gone up. Gasoline, you know, um, what it costs to buy a home, what it costs to buy a car. All these things have gone up, but salaries have stayed the same. There are more people without degree that have degrees that can't get a job, can't find a job, can't get where they've got master's degrees, bachelor's degrees. Some of them even have doctorate degrees, and they can't get a job. It takes two. Now, I don't know what where you live, but if you're looking for somebody to solely take care of you, that might be a movie that you play. You know, you watch a movie. You know, that might be a movie, you know, a good movie. But it's not, for the most part, reality. It takes two to work. Do you know? Watch this, ladies. That sometimes it's not the lion that hunts and goes get the, and gets the food. Sometimes it's the lioness. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Sometimes it's the lioness that goes out and brings the food home. Now, what am I saying? Do I say that for a man to find a man that has nothing and, and, to, um, and he's going to lay up on you? And I'm not talking about that. But sometimes a lion doesn't do the hunting. Sometimes a lioness does the hunting and brings the food home. Do you know that you can have a man who had some dirt on him and he can get clean, watch this, by the blood of Jesus? See, that's why I said that cane offering is not going to work. Abel had it right. By the blood of Jesus, a man who has some dirt on him can clean himself up and be one of the best men you've ever seen in your life. You can also, a good woman can make a man look better than he ever has been, and no one knows the difference. No one has to know your personal business. No one has to know that your man's, maybe something's going on with him. He's, he had another, he had to start over. He, you know, whatever. No one has to know this. But he is a potentially good man because he only had dirt on the outside and he wasn't like Cain 
who had dirt on the inside. See, God cursed Cain. He cursed Cain and everything Cain reproduced was cursed. If you go, go through the Bible and look at it, everything Cain did, everything he connected himself with was cursed. They said the Bible said that he walked when he left, he left away from the presence of God. How can the when God is omnipresent, how can you leave the presence of God? He left the presence of God spiritually, and his whole descendants were in that same place. He killed Abel, but God made a way through Adam and Eve. They had another child, Seth. You know, which was to replace the child that that um, Cain had slew, had killed. And they said, that's when men began to call on the name of the Lord. So look at it from that standpoint. Um, you remember the movie Daddy's Girls with Tyler Perry? Um, this guy, it was, was Idris Abel, whatever, whatever, whatever his name is. Um, but Daddy's Girls. He had a history. He had been in jail. He had baggage. He was a mechanic. And you remember that? The late she was kind of the girl was kind of embarrassed by him, especially around her friends. And many of you are going to miss out on a man because, and this is why, because you're worried about what people are going to say. You're worried about what your friends are going to say. Um, I've got a, I've got a friend who's working on her doctorate degree and, um, she's dating someone who's actually still, you know, working on his high school diploma, but the guy's a great guy. And so when you look at it, uh, when you look at it, sometimes I'm not saying lower your standards, but look at what's going on on the inside. But the guy from daddy's girl went to jail, had baggage. He was a mechanic. He had three girls. He was living home with his mother. Do you see that? And many women would miss out because they're looking at the circumstances on the outside. But don't you know that God can do anything? And then with the help of a good woman, a lot of these situations can be turned around. Um, you remember from good times when James uh, was opposed to Thelma getting married? She wanted to marry the mechanic, and um, James wasn't feeling it. He was a blue-collar worker. James did not want uh, his daughter, Thelma, to go through some of the same struggles that, uh, that, that he had went through. And you can, you can understand that to a, to a point. But I think Larry was a mechanic as well. I think, that, I think he was. Uh, was a mechanic as well. And his dad was totally against it. You know, and JJ stepped forward and JJ was the one to say something and say, you know, dad, you know, um, if they're in love, you should let them, let them, let them have, you know, I know Larry's got some dirt on him because he's a mechanic, you know, but there's something good on the inside of him. And if you give him a chance, he might be proven to be the man that your daughter really needs women how many times have we looked at somebody's resume and the resume looked fantastic and you let him in only to find out that he had so much dirt on the inside okay all right i'm gonna go somewhere if you were physically planted in dirt and you opened your mouth that's how the dirt gets on the inside. Those that have keep their mouth, keep their life. Those that have, that know how to speak. When you find a man who knows how to speak the word of God, he'll know when to open his mouth. He'll know what to do, you know, to keep from having um, the inside tarnished. And that's what we're talking about. So um, a lot of people say they like that movie, Daddy's Girl. You know, we like it too. My, my, my wife mentioned it to me. And, um, and that's it. Let me say this too. 
the next good man, not only going to come from you women, can come from you, but it can come as well from you speaking it. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. If you say, I'm not going to find, I don't think I'm going to find anybody. I'm 55. You know, I'm, I'm not going to find anybody. I'm not going to be able to get anywhere. That's where the enemy is going to use that for his advantage. But speak it. Speak what you're looking for in existence. You know, Geraldine from Flip Wilson used to always say, what you see is what you get. You know, what you say is what you get. And see, one of the things is, Another way, a, guy, a man that has some dirt on him, not in him, but on him, meaning he's not perfect. You know how he's going to be blessed as well? The Bible says a man who finds a wife finds what? A good thing, and he obtains favor with the Lord. So once he hooks up with you, there's a whole realm of favor that's getting ready to be over him. So I'm telling you, if you find a man, you know, that again, that just, he might have some problems. He's, he might have some things that need to be cleaned up, you know, but if you can see past that and see his heart, he hooks up with you, gets married. He finds favor with the Lord. Now the stuff that was on the outside, God is getting ready to turn it around in his life. God's getting ready to use him. God is getting ready. You know, my wife and I, again, when we met, I had some things going on. I, I'll be honest. Um, but my wife was able to see through my dirt. I told you when I um, met my wife, I I made it clear to her I was seeing two or three people. You know, but I, was, I wasn't in a serious relationship. But I was honest, and that's what you want to look for. And she wasn't even, you know, she said, look, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, thank you for telling me, but I'm not concerned about that right now. I'm just trying to get to know you, you know, and um, we'll just see, see where it goes. Until the day that, you know, I realized, I said, you know what, I really want this woman solely in my life. This is the person that I want to be with. And um, I, I'll never forget it. We were, we were getting ready, we were going to the movies one night. And uh, we got out, it was in, in the car, and I just watched, I just watched her. And um, and I watched her in a good way. It wasn't, a, you know, a sexual way or anything. I was just watching her and just watching who she was. And I said, this woman right here, that, that's who I want right there. And women, let me tell you, let me say this to you. Confidence in who you are. Don't let them, with the past mess up your confidence in terms of, who you are, who God has created you to be. Your walk says everything about you. You have got to walk in confidence. I don't care. Thank you, Barbara. I'm, she said, I'm, you're helping me. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what the situation looks like. You walk in confidence in yourself, but more so who God has made you to be as a real a rib is regenerative. A rib fixes itself. God made you to be self-healing. A rib self-heals. A cracked rib repairs itself. It, it, that's how God made you. You self-heal. You're able to heal in ways that we men can't fully heal. God created you self-healing. So God, no matter what you're going through right now, just touch your side and say, I'm healing. Oh my God, I, I feel, feel God right there, right there. No matter what pain you've been through as a woman, many of you have been raped, molested, touched before your time, taken advantage of, used, abused, discarded, called names, um, man has left you, but God is touching you. He's using you. He's getting ready to use you in an awesome way. And the healing is getting ready to take place. So allow that healing to take place as you walk, as you're walking, 
say I'm healed by the word of God. I am healed. Uh, God is healing me. And in your healing, you walk positive, walk confident, walk knowing that God is already doing the work. And as he's doing that, again, somebody is going to take notice. And that's how I realized and I discovered my wife had some things she was going through. But I was able to see the, see the confidence in her. And I realized, that's why I'm telling you, if you're single and you've got some issues, now's the time to work on those. Now's the time to work on those issues because when a man, a man wants to see a help meet. Remember I told you that God made Eve um, to help fit for him. He made her fit, fit, fit in terms of qualifications fit in terms of being qualified, fit in terms of being able to join together. He made him someone that was fit for him. You must be fit in many ways for the man. All right? Um, I, don't be discouraged. I know it seems that you can be discouraged because you've seen so many people get together and you don't, you haven't seen anything happen in your life, but I'm telling you, as long as you desire to be with somebody, I believe that's what God wants what you want. He's not going to give you a desire to want to be with somebody and then give you a mandate saying, you're never going to be with anybody. I don't want that for you. That's not how God works. He doesn't work that way. All right. People who are eunuchs. You know, um, I basically have decided, you know, there's a lot about being a eunuch, but, you know, it's a, it's a special calling and they don't have a desire to be with anybody. You're not a eunuch. Okay. You have a desire to be with somebody. If that's what you want. That's what God wants for your life. And, um, but like I said, the healing must take place. All right. Let, let's, let me go to someplace else. I want to read a couple of things to you. Um, I want to tell you something else real quickly about how the devil operates. You know how the enemy sends certain people, imposters, at the right time, right, wrong time? How he sends people, you know, almost close to what you said you wanted. Almost too close to what you were looking for. He sends people to say the things that you always wanted to hear. You know what? The devil is not omniscient. I'm going to teach you something. Omniscient means knowing everything. God is omniscient. He knows everything. The devil does not. He is not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. So how does God, watch this, how does God, I mean, I'm sorry, how does the enemy know so much about you? How does he know, how is he able to bring certain temptation your way? How is he able to send imposters to come down your street? How does he know so much about your weaknesses? I'm getting ready to help you. When he doesn't know everything, how does he know? Watch this. The enemy is not on a mission. He doesn't know everything, but he watches your track record. Well, Lord have mercy. He watches your past. He watches the things you say out of your mouth and that you affirm from your mouth. He takes note of the people you've picked from the past, he's watched what things have turned you on according to your personal physical lust. He's watched and he's taken note. Okay, this song works with her. This cologne worked. Oh, I'm preaching. 
This cologne works with her. This hairstyle works, this suit, this line, this, this build works with her, this height, this kind of talking, this car, this car, this salary, this, he's watching. So someone who is not omniscient is watching. Let, let, me, let me give you an example. How many of you have computers at home? If you have computers at home, if you go on Amazon and you look up a, a particular item that you want, or you go online and you look up something that you want, you want to check out the price of something. Now for the next few weeks, no matter what program you're in, even on Facebook, that item pops up. You, you ever notice that? It, here it comes, boom. You're looking for a good hotel rate. Boom, here, here it comes again. You know, and, and there's an ad for the hotel. There's an ad for that computer you're looking for. There's an ad. And these ads are coming. It's the same ads. That's because the internet has been programmed according to, to find out your likes and your and to follow your track record and to keep putting these things before you until you commit. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, I might run out of here. The, and the enemy has watched your pattern and he's putting things before you like ads. Waiting for you to, because if it comes before you enough, According to your lust, at the wall, he's hoping that you will say yes to those things. The other thing is, I want to say this. Like I told you, there's not, there's a lot to this, and there's no one particular answer. If you're, we're looking for one particular answer. I, I I'm so sorry, I disappointed you because there's a lot to it. But you got to understand that many times you can miss a good man. Because you've answered one of the ads, the previous ads that the enemy has put, and you're distracted. You pick this one here. The good one is walk, is, is walk right past you. Your, your, your heart, your soul, your mind, everything is tied up in Tyrone, who is not for you, who you're miserable with, and you're just, I mean, you're just in hell with. You can't see clearly, the, and, and a good man has already passed you by because you're caught up in an imposter that the enemy has sent according to the things that to your lust and your pattern. And that's how the enemy works. So what am I saying? I think you got the, the, the gist of what I was saying. And that's another, another part of it. We'll unpack more. We'll unpack more. But that's a part of it um, in terms of where the good men are. Again, some good men have some dirt on them. If you want a man who is totally free of dirt, who is perfect, who makes a six-figure salary, um, who can sweep you off your feet where you'll never work again, um, that's what you want, that's what you want. But you may be missing the opportunity of finding a good man inside, but again, he has some dirt on him. Like I said, there's some men who's had to start over. And um, there's some men that have to go through a lot of things. But again, you got to look at the heart. You got to look at the heart. And think about it. I want to say this too. You remember coming to America? You remember how um, Hakim was able to sleep with his bathers? Oh, stay with me. Hakim was able to sleep with his bathers and many women as he wanted to. He was able to get as much dirt on him as he wanted. But his bride, watch this had to be somebody from infancy who was trained to like what he liked, to do what he wanted them to do, to be able to obey all of his commands. She was raised 
to just do all the things that he wanted to do. She had to be a virgin while he could sow his royal oats. She had to be a virgin. What am I saying? I'm, I'm saying all of this to say that you want a man, if you want a man to be perfect, what are you bringing to the table? All right. All right. You want a man to have all of this, but what have you done in your life? What mistakes have you made? And even though Hakeem has some dirt on him, there's royalty there. So, uh, if you were in that movie or in that real life situation, would the oh oh my goodness! Remember the father of of of, of that of that bride had to present. Oh Lord have mercy! Had to present his daughter to Hakeem. Do you remember that? The father had to present his daughter to Hakeem, basically saying, vouching for her to saying that she is fit, Lord have mercy, for him. Can the father, <laughs> Lord have mercy, Jesus, can God the father be in that same place, submit you to the next man? saying that you are fit for him. So while you have all these things, you want this man to be perfect, can the Father present you to the next Hakeem? Oh, Lord have mercy. All right. Um, there's a couple of situations here that people have sent me that I want to run past you. And um, I want to see if you uh, could help me with them, all right? Situation number one, I was married for 15 years. It didn't work. And I was devastated and mad at God. But God told me that he never told me from the beginning that that man was my husband. So now I'm trying to do this right so that I can have a different outcome. Being single is very hard for me because I love relationships. But what I am learning is that I've never had a chance to be single and work on myself and invest in me. Oh my goodness, this person must have listened to some of my, some of my posts. This sounds like the stuff I'm teaching. So instead of me being sad or lonely during this season, I am invested, get, they had to listen to me. This is, this is the stuff I've been preaching. I am investing in my growth, mentally, spiritually, and financially. I'm grateful that I, I came across your teachings during this time. I'm reading this for the first time. I'm seeing things a lot differently. Looking forward to the next live teaching. So the person... I love what they said here, and I think you do too. I saw a lot of stuff come across the screen there, and um, I, I commend them. I, I do want to say one thing, but she said, um, no, 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 God, no, 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 trying to do this right. Um, I've never had a chance to be single and work on it. There was something, I'm trying to see if I could catch it here. Devastated, mad. Okay. She said she was devastated and mad at God. And um, it's not amazing how we can be mad at God when we really didn't take time to really hear from him in the first place. Now, as I told you before, this person you have to choose. All right. This person you have to choose and you choose them one by making sure you're equally yoked. They've got to love God and Jesus and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They have to have a relationship with him. Okay? Can't have it any other way. That's being equally yoked. Okay? Um, and you pick the person 
according to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 4th through the 7th verse. It talks about what love is, okay, and what it's not. Use that as a template, men or women, for the person you're going to hook up with. That's the, people, the kind of people that you're going to bring into your life. That's the kind of people that you're going to make sure, even if they have dirt on the, in, on the outside, that that, that's, that stuff can be just washed off, wiped off. Washed off through the blood of Jesus. But the inside, make sure that inside uh, is right. Okay? Um, so I think she just wanted to testify here. I think that's great. I commend you. Whoever this is, I, I commend you. Um, all right. Remember last, the other week that we talked about, there was a woman that talked about her son and she said that her son is home taking care of the kids and the wife is out there cheating and they just got married, I think three months ago, something like that. And I said, well, I need a little bit more. So the mother wrote me again, turn it on the fan here because it's hot. The mother wrote me again and she said, uh, let me go into deeper details with you. I'm reading this for the first time. My son's uh, friend wanted to wanted him to find a girlfriend for him. So she said, my son's friend wanted to find a girlfriend for him, for, my, for her son. So what my son did was download his friends and his wife, seeing these girls on his phone. And my son tried to tell her, but she didn't believe him. Trust me, if my son wanted to mess around, he could find uh, girls to run with. He tried to do everything to fix it and he, talk about their marriage and even had the guy talk to his wife, but it didn't work. She left him one time before and went to stay with her parents, but my son loved her and asked her to stay with her. The foolish thing is that this girl cheated before and said she was drunk, too drunk to remember a threesome in a hotel all while my son was home keeping her boys. Truthfully, as I was talking to him today, I lost it, and I had to ask God to forgive me. Yeah, I'm about to lose it myself. I'm, I'm reading this for the first time, too. This is a mother, uh, who had, those of you that missed it, this is a mother who has a son, and she's worried about a son because they all know that his wife is out there cheating, and he's home taking care of the kids. And they've only been married a few months, and he and she's out there. Um, she said, I lost it. I had asked God to forgive me. Nevertheless, he has made plans to come here until he can get on his feet. I don't see him staying because, like I said before, he takes care of the boys as far as feeding them, clothing them, putting them in bed, and the list goes on. As far as she, they don't listen to her at all, talking about the kids, because she shows no interest in taking care of them. Um, so they call her by her name and like she calls her mother by her name. Not only that this girl has tried to kill herself twice and has been in the hospital both times. So I have said, so I said, if you leave her this time, I don't care what she does to it. Don't look back. Um, So basically, as you can see, this is the, the mother telling another side of the story. Yeah, Lynn, she is, this this woman, uh, this young lady is broken and has a myriad of issues, of issues here. So um, this, this is a response. We asked that we read part of the story earlier, I think a week ago, and uh, we said we needed more information because it was hard that we didn't have enough information to, to judge this. So it looks like your son is going to have to take some action here because this is way out of control here. And uh, so we're going to be praying for them. All right. Situation number three. My question is how to be a mother-in-law and parent to your children when they are in bad relationships because I'm failing miserably. All right. Well, as a mother, as a father, um, our children get in these jacked up relationships and we get in jacked up relationships. So, you know, we, we can almost, I mean, see that it happens with our kids. Um, we we got to keep them in prayer. And prayer is a powerful thing. Many times people say, oh, I'm going to pray. I, the only thing I can do is pray. Like that's the last resort. And that prayer is weak. If you're doing it correctly, you're talking to 
the God of the universe who created all things. He can do anything. So as a parent, you pray and speak what you want to see happen. If, you, if your child is a, is a, if they're a praying person, get with them. You two touch and agree on the things that you're looking for. Um, if you can't get them to do it, get with your husband or get with somebody else in, uh, in church or somebody, your pastor, your pastor's wife. Let's touch and agree on the things that you're looking to see uh, and the things that they're failing to see that they need to find out and they need to look and see. So pray, pray. And, and I, I guarantee you, God will move. Situation number four. Watch this, y'all. Pastor, what do you think of a pastor or bishop who comes into your home looking through your drawers, your closet, and then helping himself to things in your refrigerator? It has happened to me while I'm homesick. All right. Okay. So you see this woman is saying that her pastor has come into her home and he's looking into her refrigerator and look, uh, refrigerator is one thing. Okay. I don't even, I'm not even with that, but looking through your drawers and your closets, um, I'd have to rebuke him and, and get him out of there. And I'd have to go to another church. Uh, this is a nut. Uh, and it's out of, Claudia said it out of what Brenda said it out of order. Glory is saying, glory is saying it's out of order. You know, you don't want, you know, anybody that, that that's that crazy to go through your stuff like that. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely out of order there. That's definitely out of order. So, um, I don't even know what to say. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, this crazy pastor, you got to go to another, find another church to go to, you know, because, um, Especially the, the stuff of looking through your closets. Oh, what, oh my goodness. Let me, let me, oh my goodness. I, it just came to me. Remember I said Satan is not, a, is not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. But he follows your track record. And the enemy snoops through your things. You can find a lot of, out about a person by looking through their drawers. You can find a lot about a person by looking in their closet. The enemy, that is the enemy because he's not a mission. He is going, he's, he sent this person on assignment to look through your stuff to find out more about your track record in order to use those things against you and in order to infiltrate your home, your physical home, and your spiritual home. Rebuke that rascal. Rebuke him. Can't be invited to your house again. Find another church to go to. Block, if he's on Facebook, block and delete. Okay? That's it. All right? Um, you know, that, that that's sick right there. That's absolutely, absolutely sick. And um, if I was there, you know, I mean, as much as I love the Lord, I would put my foot in his behind uh, for searching through my personal, personal stuff here. And uh, Michael Nelson, he just finished, said, I just finished a book about witches and warlocks. Um, and all that stuff is connected. I mean, they, again, that's how the enemy probes and stuff. You know, that's how the enemy works. Earlier today, I told you we were going to talk about the situation let me just say it again real quickly um, that I need your help with. Um, and the young lady gave us permission to share this so it may help you as well. Um, there's a young lady who um, she's married. She has a really, has a really decent marriage. She um, loves her husband. And, uh, but she ran into this guy she went to high school with. And uh, he became a physical trainer, works at the gym, you know, fit, cut, the whole deal, good looking guy. Um, she met him and um, she, she ran into him. He was a high school friend. She had a crush on him all throughout high school. They never hooked up. He claimed to be saved. 
So she uh, invited him to do a seminar, like a, a physical seminar, um, invited him to the church. And he did, a, he taught a couple of classes on fitness and, and, um, and working out and what have you. And these classes went very well. So one day he, now she was just crazy about him. So one day he invited her over to his house. They got there to the house. I forgot to mention earlier that, uh, you know, they shut the door and whatever, and they started kissing. Now, this woman's married to someone else. She was down with the kissing because she was, she was, you know, she really liked the guy. But all of a sudden, it took a turn. And he said, it's going to happen today. He said, it's going to happen today. And he... He forced himself on her, and um, he took it. He raped her. This woman is at a dilemma because does she tell her husband now that how does she, her reason, now she's got to tell her husband not only did, did he rape her, but now she's got to explain that about the class. Um, she's got to explain you know, if the guy might say, well, she was kissing me, you know, the guy might, um, you know, she's going to explain all of that. You know, we men, you know, have, you know, the, the pride that's in us and we don't want anybody touching our, our women and, and, um, and, uh, and then the, just the hurt of knowing that your wife was that much, that so much attractive to another person, um, that he, that she willingly went to his house. Um, I don't know if she's going to find, if he's going to find out about the willingly in terms of kissing, but willingly allowed, um, I mean, went to the house. So, uh, that's a tough thing, you know, and we, we've got to figure it, you know, um, I guess we're mostly bringing this out as a warning to you. You could think, you know, someone and not really know them. And this is why I was saying, women, you know, your first few dates, do not go to a man's house. Don't go to a man's house. Somebody you know from church, don't let that catch you. Um, don't let that. I've, I've, I've known several women who have gone over to a guy's house and they, they just basically forced themselves um, on them, on the woman. This is your life. You're going to have to guard it. You've got to guard it. Somebody you think you know, I'm telling you, you got to be careful. You know, um, someone that that you meet, again, you do not put yourself in a position where somebody can take advantage of you. And this is tough. She thought she knew him, and, um, and now she's got to go break the news to her husband and press charges. Um, she's got to break the news to her husband. And um, and do this. Let me see real quickly what y'all would say. What would y'all do? Would you would you tell your husband? Would you admit that you had a crush on someone else? Um, or would you keep this to yourself? What would you do if you were this woman? Um, and what would it do to your marriage? And um, so that, that this is tough. That that's tough. You know. Um I like what Laureen just mentioned. You know, um, I think she mentioned. Yeah, this is a tough uh LeJean Jones, yes. It's tough. You know. So a part of her, like somebody said, a part of her wanted him. She was she probably watched him as he was teaching the class the other women. We're probably gawking over this guy, and she was proud of that because she brought him, you know, to teach the class. So she was already attracted to her. She's probably proud of the fact that she brought him to the class. He's teaching all the other women. are like, whoa, oh, my Lord, oh, this man, oh, you know, and that's the opportunity. Remember I told oh, my goodness, here it is. Remember I told you about Satan following your track record? Since he's not a mission, he goes by what he sees, what he hears. 
what he observes. He knew that she was caught up, especially when he was teaching the class. And when he said, there might have been some other times he might not have went over there, but it was right after that class. He said, why don't you come on over to the house? Now, you like this guy. You're attracted to him. This guy just got finished working out. What um, what are you going over to his house for? What are you going over to his house for? <clears throat> so, see how the enemy wants to trick you up? And the results of that, if her husband is truly a good man, this might jack him up. This might jack him up in many ways. Um, and there are a lot of men out there who, who have been who have been victims of this, and they're discouraged, and they're they've had it. They're like, man, I've been faithful to my wife, and she went out there and you know, and and did this to me. Um, so you, I mean, there's a lot to this, but I'm, I'm saying this tonight, yeah, Nambia, I'm saying this tonight for you to be on guard. I want you to be on guard because watch this, the Cain spirit. When Abel gave his offering and Cain saw that God was pleased with his offering, the Bible says that Abel was wroth. I mean, that, that Cain was wroth, meaning he was, he was teed off. He was upset. He was furious. He was furious because God accepted Abel's offering. And the enemy is upset with you. Because many of you women are trying to get closer to God. Many of you women are in the place where you can atone. Lord, forgive me of my sins and get yourself right. The enemy can't stand that. And that Cain came. Cain wants to destroy your ability, your relationship with God. He wants to destroy and kill it. And again, You've got to watch that spirit, that Cain spirit, that the enemy will send. Cain is sometimes a good-looking man. Cain is sometimes a man who has six figures. Cain is sometimes a man who has a nice car, a nice job, a high position. But that spirit is being used by the enemy to kill your spirit. And you know what? When you're hurt by a man, watch this. I'm going to put this together and I'm going to say good night. When you're hurt by a man and women, I know you can attest to this. Men, when you're hurt by a woman, it almost messes up your relationship with God. You can't think. You can't eat. You can't pray. You can't properly atone for your sins. You're just a, a mess. And that's because Cain has successfully come in and killed your spirit to be able to stop you from giving an offering. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's how, this is why that, that I want you to go through Genesis, um, I think it's like four, the fourth chapter on, and read about this, okay? I, I, again, it's not, it's not literally... But it's a spiritual concept. When Cain left, when Cain left, he said he left from out of the presence of the Lord. And and but that that whole his whole family, everything he he produced, these were some evil people. They were so bad. That's why the flood came, because they were intermixing with Seth's people. Just trying to bring it back home for you. And God said, you know what? I can't have these giants and these evil people. He said their hearts were, con were evil continuously. And God had to wipe these folk off. That's why the flood came. I, he said, I got I, I, I to wipe all these folk off. We got to start over. We, we got to start over. So I want you to look at that, not literally, but spiritually. This is only, these folk were so wicked, but the people these days, it's only a portion of the wickedness. That's why God had to destroy these people. They were, I mean, you don't even know what wicked is. The most wicked murder, killing, 
anything that you see in this world today, that's nothing compared to Cain's descendants, to those people, those giants. They were some evil folk. But the enemy, who's not on mission, who watches and copies, watch the pattern. And even though the flood destroyed, oh, I wish I had somebody, destroyed the original Cain descendants, the enemy has spiritually recreated the Cain spirits to come back to these days to hook up with you who have a relationship with God to kill you, to prevent you from being able to give an offering, 